Hey guys, how's it going? It's Razor. Hey, I just wanted to give you a quick update tutorial on Multi-MC. It's been a while since I've covered it. Uh, I found a pretty easy way to uh, install your mods using Multi-MC. Um, this is kind of an intermediate tutorial. This is for people who are um, already using mods maybe or using the Feed the Beast uh, mod packs and want to convert your stuff over to Multi-MC, have a little more control over your mods. Um, and that's what I'll be doing for uh, my next Let's Play, which is coming out really soon. Um, so the first thing you want to do is, of course, download uh, the Multi-MC program, which is just at this address here. And just the download link here. Uh, then if you're, if you're brand new to mods, I recommend you start with the Feed the Beast launcher. Uh, which is here at feedthebeast.com and uh, if you just go down here you can download the jar file here I've already done both of those obviously and <clears throat> I've just created a, a a folder for each of those on my hard drive uh, FTB launcher over here you'll download this file here um, and then for multi multi MC you'll download just a single file here so the first thing you want to do is just launch FTB, um, the FTB launcher. And then when you first come up, it's probably going to ask you to do some updates and so forth. And if it's the first time you've run it, um, you're going to need to go down here and create a profile, which allows you to enter your Minecraft username and password, which I've already done. And then you're going to want to select a mod pack over here. And uh, the mod pack for... For me, that's uh, the most compatible with the way I play is the Direwolf mod pack, and that's the one that I'm going to start with for for my Let's Play. So you just select the mod pack over here, hit launch. It'll just bring up Minecraft. It'll download the whole mod pack, configuration files, everything you need, uh, which is kind of the beauty of the whole mod pack thing. Um, so once you have that. Wherever you put the launcher, you'll get a folder for whatever mod pack it was that you downloaded. And uh, if you just look in this folder, you'll see it's um, it's just a standard folder. There's nothing special about it. You have a mods uh, folder in there. You have your saves, texture packs, configuration, and so forth. Nice thing is, it's all download, downloaded for you. And the configuration files are already configured and and all the mods are working together um, and that's the beauty of it so you, when you uh, want to take a little more control over it uh, then I recommend MultiMC of course and if you just uh, launch MultiMC over here um, I've already launched it and I've got a bunch of um, stuff already going <laughs> as you can tell I've already got a bunch of instances running, but the first time you run it, you'll have um, a blank slate like this. And there's a new option up here. If you use this little pull down, there's an import from FTB launcher. So if you click that guy, it's going to come up and ask you, first of all, it's going to, uh, if you if this is the first time you've run it, it's not going to know where FTB launcher is. It already knows because I've already run it, but uh, you would go and uh, navigate to that folder, which I, which is right here. Uh, you don't want to select the actual pack yet, just the FTB folder. Then say select folder, and it's going to pop up and ask you which pack you want to install. I only have the one pack, uh, so select Direwolf, and that wants to know what you want to call the instance. Uh, let's just call this test. So now it's going to copy all the files from the mod pack over into MultiMC and create a new instance that'll be an exact copy of the mod pack. Um, now the reason you'd want to do this is because when you use the mod packs, um, there's advantages and disadvantages. The mod pack is uh, great because um, it keeps all the files nice and and compact and together and configured and working well and if there's a updates to those mods or uh, config files or anything like that then you'll get it in the next uh, mod pack update the problem comes if you want to configure those mods maybe add your own mods um, 
play around with configuration files if I went into this mod pack and started tweaking the configs and adding my own mods and so forth the next time the mod pack got updated it would overwrite all my changes so um, it's a better idea to use multi MC if you're wanting to to do any kind of modifications and configurations as you can see here uh, it's downloaded the um, or copied over uh, the mod pack and created the uh, instance if we right click on this instance we can hit edit mods and then of course here is for those familiar with multi MC here are your basic uh, folders uh, your jar files the core mods and the mods there's your three different types of uh, mods and they're already in place and ready to go from the mod pack uh, and then of course texture packs if you want to use that uh, I've already uh, I've already created one called test before so it's already got um, some stuff already in here like sore text for texture packs but normally this would be blank um, so one of the things right off the bat that I see that I would like to add is Optifine in here and uh, uh, off screen here I've got a folder uh, I keep one folder in my hard drive that's just all the mods for a certain version of Minecraft and um, uh, I just go to the forums every once in a while download the latest stuff as you can see I've got two or three versions of that, like Railcraft there and, and so forth and so on um, so uh, I want to add some mods in here but the other thing I want to do is uh, yeah, let's see if you if it tells you here you select this um, it doesn't know the version yet we need to run this for the very first time so that it can uh, create all the necessary folders and forge can uh, do its thing uh, and there we go um, I didn't run the uh, the pack over in the in the FTB launcher side but it would look almost identical to this 57 mods so it's really nice that those 57 mods are already configured and working for you over here in multi MC so now you can take this and do with with it what you want uh, you can take a look at the mods here if you want just a list of them again um, so let's close this down close out multi MC here and now we can go ahead and mess with these config files uh, still not recognizing the uh, mod or the uh, Minecraft version but I know that it's a uh, 146 um, so what I want to do first before I go messing with the mods is I want to upgrade to 147 as of the time of this recording uh, 147 just just was released and I just happen to know that 147 mods uh, or 146 mods work with 147 pretty easily and uh, so what I'm going to do is hit change version and um, I'm going to select 147 which it says right here is the current version and hit OK and uh, I don't think it really does much uh, the next time you launch it let's go ahead and launch it one more time there it's going to download the newest Minecraft and so uh, if we try to after this happens if we were to try to run it uh, yeah see there's a fatal error starting up um, the, fought, the forge mod loader and uh, the reason for that is because we need the correct version for this version of Minecraft so we need to go right click here say edit mods and this version of forge is for four our 146 so let's remove it and they got this nifty little button here you can say MC forge and up pops all the latest uh, builds for this version of Minecraft and uh, usually I just select the latest one unless there's some other reason why I wouldn't want to uh, by reading a forum post or something like that say OK and it'll download Forge and so there we have this Forge version now we want to close this and run it one more time uh, so that Forge can do its thing and get it 
you know, if it has to make any changes behind the scenes, we still want to make sure this is going to work uh, before we uh, move forward. So as you can see, now we have Minecraft 147 and uh, everything worked just fine. The new version of Forge is here, still have 57 mods. Uh, of course, I would want to go a little further, maybe create a world and test it. I'm not going to do that here on camera, but uh, you would probably want to do that. Make sure everything runs runs okay. But I can tell you, if you get to this screen, you're like 99% there. Uh, if everything loads correctly, you'll see this screen. Otherwise, you'll see a crash screen. So I'm just going to quit. And uh, so let's get back to editing the mods. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the first things, obviously, that I want to do is add Optifine, like I said. So over here in my list of goodies, um, I've already downloaded a bunch of stuff, including Optifine here. So just drag and drop that guy over here. The other thing I want to do is add into core mods. I want to add tree capitator. Uh, one of my favorite mods for chopping down trees. Uh, this is one of the only other mods that I know of that goes in the core mods folder besides NEI. So I'm going to drag that over here. And I wouldn't do too much at a time. You know, just do one or two like that. Uh, these two are like more utility type mods so I think they'll be okay uh, if you start adding mods that play with the block IDs and stuff add those one at a time and make sure they work first each time that way you know if, if it doesn't work you'll know exactly which mod it was that caused the problem um, there's a bunch of other mods that I've downloaded that have later versions than what's in that mod pack and that's another advantage that I really like is I can can go in and keep the mods updated um, to newer versions than the mod pack has. Um, the mod pack's always going to lag behind just a little bit from the newest versions. Um, so, uh, you know, I would do that. Um, close this out, run it again, make sure everything's okay, uh, and just keep doing that. Now, the other thing is um, if you right click and say view folder, You can go into Minecraft and go into the configuration files. And um, one thing I know that I want to do, and I can't do it because I haven't run it again yet. Uh, I just put Tree Capitator over there, so its configuration file is not here, but I can show you one that already is. It's one of the instances that I've already been working on and I created this instance the same way as I did this one uh, copied over from the mod pack so if I right click this one and view its folder go into Minecraft um, config uh, let's see should have tree capitator down here so this is just an example of one of the things you could do um, tree capitator has gotten pretty nice by the way uh, it actually goes out and reads configuration files from other mods and adds in the trees and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Uh, kind of automatically figures out stuff. Figures out what trees you can chop down with it. Uh, so if you get past all the configuration for the trees, um, there's one thing that you're, you're going to want to do. Uh, and that is... Where is it? Where is it? Right here. This axe list. Uh, when you first run this, it'll start out with just the vanilla uh, axes. And uh, you can add more axe IDs so that uh, axes from other mods will be able to chop down trees. Uh, and just like, uh, just like the vanilla axes. Uh, these three are from Red Power, those gem axes. Um, Let's see, I've forgotten the other ones. One of them's for Thomcraft, one of them's for Railcraft, uh, the Thomium Axe, and then the Railcraft uh, Steel Axe. Uh, and I forgot what the other one is. But uh, the way I found out what these IDs were is I just went into uh, NEI after I loaded a world and just looked and saw what the ID was. Wrote them down, come back in here, edit it, 
and save it and there you go so that's just an example of the kind of stuff you can do once you have the mod over uh, the mod pack uh, over into multi MC so it's a great way to to get started with into multi MC if you've never uh, tried it before um, of course there's nothing wrong with running the FTB launcher and using the mod pack as is uh, but uh, if you want to take a little more control, this is a great way to do it. So uh, I think that's about it. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll be glad to answer. So as always, guys, thanks for watching and look forward to my Let's Play coming up soon. All right. See you.